Hey folks, everything new under the sun. I've got this King Spec SSD. Got this off eBay. <clears throat> I think it was about fifty dollars, and I figured I would do a review of it. It's a sixty-four gigabyte SSD, solid state, two point five inch drive. And so this is what it looks like if you haven't ordered one like this. King Spec solid state drive. Here's what's on the bottom. Kingspec.com. Like I said, you can find these on eBay. See if we can focus on that. Fast read, right? Yeah, it's an SSD. Shockproof, yes, it's solid state. Not going anywhere. Low power, yes. Low no, no noise, yes, because there's no moving parts. Tenth anniversary from Shenzhen. So uh, basically, straight from China. Made in China. And everything's straight from China these days. And uh, here's what it shows on the other side. Fast read, right? Yep. Shockproof. Low noise. Okay. And so what we've got today is I've got my little uh, drive toaster. We're going to um, unbox this guy and put it in the drive toaster and then look at disk utility uh, on the iMac and just uh, see how this thing shows up, see what this thing shows up like. So let's pop this open. Let's do the unbox here. It took about two weeks to get here, I guess. Here it is. I originally ordered the black version, not that I cared, black or blue. Uh, they didn't have black version in stock, so they sent me a blue version. They actually, they were very good, actually. They uh, notified me and said, look, you know, we don't have the black version. Is the blue version good enough? And I said, well, absolutely. You know, I, I, don't, I don't care if it's black or blue, as long as it's 64 gigabytes and it's the same quality. So you get the drive. It's very very light drive. I mean, it's all solid-state plastic. You know, there's probably a 64 gig SD card in there, effectively. You get some screws with it, which is, I guess, that's kind of nice to have the extra screws there. It comes so uh, well packed. It's a nice uh, plastic container, so it's not sliding around in the box at all. So look at it. We see King Spec on the back, 2.5 SATA 3, 64 gigabyte. Now you may look at that and say, 64 gigabyte. Why would you get an uh, S? If why would you go to the trouble of getting an SSD? Of only 64 gigabytes, because even in the uh, even this in this iMac, which I did update to have an SSD, it goes much faster. I have a 256 gigabyte drive, and even that is small for a desktop computer. This can see uh, this is a crucial MX one or something. I forget what it is. MX something rather. 256 gig SSD, and so there you can see it there. Two. It is a 2.5 inch drive. If, if you want to watch that video. Um, Search in my uh, on my YouTube channel for iMac SSD, and you should be able to find it where I put the 256, 256 gig drive into that iMac there. So what did I get a 64 gig? Well, I just purchased uh, a MacBook Pro, a broken one, and um, my perfect recreational uh, laptop is effectively a MacBook Air. But a MacBook Air is limited. You can't upgrade the RAM and stuff in it. Um, so I got a, a broken uh, MacBook Pro, I like think it's a 2010 or 2011 or something like that. I haven't received it yet, but I had some plans to put this into another MacBook Pro actually that I just sold, but it was out a little outdated. I wanted to get the latest Mac OS, OS X Sierra on it, and uh, so I went ahead and sold that, but this was still on its way and I hadn't made use of it yet. So my plan is to fix up the MacBook Pro and 6 to 64, stick the 64 gig SSD in there, it will make that system super quick and snappy. And I find, you know, as long as you're not doing a whole bunch of video processing, if you're just doing email, surfing the web, then 64 gigs is plenty of space. OS X by itself uh, takes, you know, 20 or 30 gigs. <coughs> and then you have, you know, another uh, 30, 30 plus gigs to play with for space, basically. So for email and surfing, browsing, 64 gigs will make a really nice recreational device, you know, that I use. Uh, so I'll use my main iMac for the heavy lifting, for the big files, the video processing. And I'll use the MacBook Pro, more like a MacBook Air or an iPad, more like you'd use those. Have a completely solid-state MacBook Pro, which does uh, is really snappy and fast for uh, minor videos if I want to do them. But they have a, it'll have a nice uh, snappy SSD, uh, low temperature, so when it's on your lap, it's not going to be heating up very, uh, as much. And if you bump it around, you know, there's no trouble. It's all solid state, so, you know, you can, nothing's going to hurt this thing. There's no head there to bonk on the, on the spindle. 
And, you know, if you're really desperate for more space, you can get a 128 gig USB uh, drive that you can plug in, just a, you know, a, a tiny little adapter that you can stick in the side of your MacBook and get extra storage space if you really want it. But these days with cloud devices and uh, over the network, you know, um, network accessible storage, NAS devices, etc. On this iMac, I have a Drobo, a Firewire 800 Drobo. And I use that, so I can make that network accessible just by sharing it on my network from my iMac. So when I'm in the house on my own Wi-Fi, I should be able to access all my files and have uh, have like an iPad-like experience or a MacBook Air-like experience. But with the power of a MacBook Pro that I can upgrade the RAM in and, uh, you know, do uh, even upgrade this at a later time if I really want. And I have a fully functioning, very, very functional, very powerful uh, system for recreational use, which I, then I can take on vacation and, and will do most of what I would need. So, I've been blabbering on here, uh, but I just want to give you that background. So I expect to use this in, a, in a, probably a 2010 MacBook Pro. And uh, that's why I think the 64 gigs is, is plenty for what I need, uh, emailing, uh, very light-duty stuff. Because my end goal is to make a, like a MacBook Air solid-state device, except for the fans that are in it. And more like an iPad, where you pick it up and go, and you're not worried about getting bumped around. And my Drobo there is telling me that I have a, a new update. It must have. Its ears were burning because I was talking about the Drobo unit uh, attached to my iMac. So without further ado here, let's let's plug this into the toaster unit. This toaster accepts 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch. This is a Sabrent. And I think I did a video on this as well. You can get this on Amazon or eBay, wherever. You know, these toaster units are a dime a dozen and fairly cheap. But it is a standard SATA, so I can just slide it in here. There's a little cutout for the 2.5 inch drive. And I'll just uh, punch that down. Do I have it turned the right way around? Yes, no. There it is. So it's in there. Now let's press the power here. And uh, we should see it. So it lights up. It's going to think about it. And then we should see it pop up here. Disk is not readable. So yes, let's go initialize this one. Alright, so this device is showing us ASMT2105 Media. And so if I click on that, then you can see it is USB, it is external, and it is 63 gigabytes. That's kind of what you'd expect. Because you never get the full value, and it is uninitialized. So when I click initialize, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing here. But let's uh let's click info here and see what this says. Pull this over here. Capacity 63 gigs. Okay, writable, no. So I have to initialize it to be a writable smart cell. A solid state? No, it doesn't even know it's a solid state. Um, I guess that's because it's plugged into a toaster and not directly via SATA. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go erase this thing. And I'm going to call this thing SSD. For now, I can change it later. I'm going to wipe this out and put, a heart, put an OS on it. We'll go with Mac OS, uh, OS Extended Journal and Erase. So there it is, formatting the 64 gig drive, and it is done. So now, effectively, I can use this like an external drive. So now it shows up as SSD here. Click on that, shows good. It's basically empty, and you can see used 158, 50, what does that say? 56 megabytes USB, and uh, available just under 63 gigs USB external physical volume so there you go so now if I go up into my about Mac then I should see this extra storage if I click storage we'll see if it shows up so and it does it's at the bottom so at the top you can see my SSD it is a 256 gig SSD you can see it says solid state drive solid state SATA there this is my firewire my Drobo unit uh, and no, it doesn't have 17 terabytes. It has about 900 uh, gigs of space. But that's my FireWire connected drive that I can turn into a NAS if I want. I actually have a proper net net gear store NAS. Down here is the is the SSD. So this is wiped, good to go, empty, nice and empty. I can um, I could probably clone a, an OS onto it. Just plug it right into the MacBook Pro, and off we go. But I'll I'll do a fresh install there, anyways. So there it is. A uh, uh, quick look at the uh, the King Spec SSD. Let me uh, let me turn this thing off here and we'll pull this back out. 
MacBook's not going to like that. Ejected improperly, oh no. So that's turned off. Pull this out. So there it is. There's an unboxing look at the King Spec uh, SSD drive, and this is 2.5 inch. And like I said, this is a 64 gig version. And for what I'm doing, that is uh, that is plenty of space. So there it is, the unbox of the uh, the King Spec SSD. Hope you found that helpful. And uh, yeah, the the build quality it seems good to me. I mean, this is like a nice uh, tin uh, aluminum case, I guess it is. And uh, it's. Uh, the build quality is good enough. It looks looks good to me. It works. Format's good. Max sees it, and uh, everything's good. So, next video you'll see involving this will be uh, installing it on a MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave it there, and we'll see you guys in the next. Video.